inspirational CEOs, super bosses, motivational leaders. There are hundreds of studies looking at what makes these kind of people tick and consequently get such great results. Fewer on how bad bosses work. Stanford professor Jeffrey Pfeffer bucks this trend and he joins me down the line now. Jeffrey, not to name and shame, but who would you say have been the disaster bosses over the last few years and why? There have been many. Carly Fiorina, who of course got fired from Hewlett Packard, who laid off tons of people and did probably one of the worst mergers in the history of the world when she bought Compaq Computer, which of course didn't work out. Dominique Strauss-Kahn, who... Uh, killed his any any hope of being an effective president of France and could not not even run because of the sexual assault. Uh, the list goes on and on. I mean, most bosses, I think, have not done a good job of taking care of their employees or their customers. So what would you say makes a bad boss? Someone who bullies other people and who doesn't pay much attention to customers or their employees. Therefore, they drive their organizations into the ground. But you do say authenticity is overrated. I imagine this isn't really a popular view considering we're still reeling years after the 2008 financial crisis and made banker bashing a hobby amongst many. So why do you say this? Authenticity says that you ought to be true to yourself. Great leaders are not true to themselves. They are true to what the people around them need from them. So if you don't feel well, if you're discouraged, you can't necessarily show that. You have to put on a good face, a good front. You have to have energy. You have to show that the people in your organization, and for, to, for that matter, to the customers, that you are committed to them and you're interested in them. So you don't need to be true to yourself. You need to be true to what the people around you need and want from you. Do you think the concern surrounding this sort of thing is generated by a public who sort of want to believe in an ideal, not a reality, whereas people in business know that being ruthless is usually a positive? I think there has been a huge confusion about what we want leaders to be and what they actually are. And many people tell lovely stories about these individuals, which bear almost no resemblance to reality, because everybody, including even the most effective and distinguished leaders, people like Gandhi or Abraham Lincoln or whoever your favorite leader is, when you look at them, they all have flaws and they all have done things uh, that, that, that people not are, wouldn't necessarily agree are a great thing to do. So you need to be more pragmatic and less idealistic, that's for sure. And you write that sometimes you have to do bad things to achieve results. Surely acknowledging this is a little bit dangerous, though, almost acts as a scapegoat for bad business practice. So where do you draw the line? Well, I think we need to be realistic about what people do and what they don't do. I think telling stories uh, and, and having this kind of mythology of leadership, which is we've had for a long time, we get nowhere by telling these stories. That's why 60, 70 years down the road, after we began this leadership industry, things aren't any, things aren't any better. The employee engagement is low, job satisfaction is low, and leaders are flaming out and losing their jobs. So how would you analyze whether you're a good or bad leader? Is it purely down to results? I think it's down to results, and I think the first responsibility of a leader is to keep his or her job. I mean, you know, if you're going to change lives, change organizations, change the world, the first thing you have to do is you have to be in a position of power. If you lose your job, if you lose your position, if you get outmaneuvered, you're not going to be successful or effective simply because you won't be in a position to do anything. So finally, what should leaders take away from this? We ought to evaluate leadership development activities not by whether or not people enjoy them, but by whether or not we've actually improved workplaces and leaders' careers. And secondly, I think leaders need to pay attention to the real dynamics of power in organizations and, uh, and therefore uh, do things that permit them to be successful and get things done.